recombinant DNA and biotechnology. In order to study a gene, we introduce our gene of interest from an organism into a vector. We then introduce this recombinant DNA into the host cells, allowing it to multiply. This DNA can then be isolated, purified and studied further for better understanding of its functions. This technology is called recombinant DNA technology. The bacterium Escherichia coli or E. coli is an extremely convenient tool for molecular biologists to study the effect of genetic manipulations. We can observe rapid results which can be quantified easily since it is a single-celled organism. It has a simple genomic makeup. It can reproduce and grow very rapidly. This is the desired gene from a study organism. This gene is selectively removed from the genomic or plasmid DNA and can be cloned into a host organism for further analysis. In order to check if transformation has occurred, we use marker genes. A dominant selective marker such as an antibiotic resistance gene is constructed into the vector. If a host cell takes up the vector, it takes up the gene of interest in addition to a gene that provides antibiotic resistance. Hence, it is able to thrive in media containing that particular antibiotic. This allows us to select the cells that have taken up our gene of interest. When some DNA is isolated and purified from the source, we require larger quantities to conduct studies. So, we can use an amplification technique known as the polymerase chain reaction or PCR to generate large amounts of a selected DNA sequence. A fragment of DNA about 100 or more base pairs in length acts as the template. We then add primers of length 17 to 30 nucleotides. The forward primers are complementary to the beginning of the template and the backward primers are complementary to the end. The deoxyribonucleotides DATP, DCTP, DGTP and DTTP make up the nucleotide pool. A polymerase enzyme is employed to extend the strands. The first and most commonly used one is TAC polymerase from the organism Thermus aquaticus. It is heat resistant and can withstand high temperatures. There are three steps in each PCR cycle. Denaturation, annealing and extension. Denaturation. When the DNA is heated to about 94 degrees Celsius, the double-stranded DNA is separated into two strands. Annealing. This process occurs at 55 to 65 degrees Celsius. The forward and reverse primers bind to the two separated strands. Extension. At around 72 degrees Celsius, the polymerase adds nucleotides complementary to the strands in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. This way, an exponential amplification of the DNA is observed with each cycle.
An optimum PCR reaction is around 30 cycles.